The Bible is the most accurate history ever written. with us today about that very fact is Timothy Mahoney. Timothy, it's, it's great to have you here at Prophecy Watchers. Well, I'm really happy to be here too. You are a, a writer. You have produced a wonderful book called Patterns of Evidence, uh, and we'll talk more about that later. You, you've uh, produced a DVD called Patterns of Evidence, and the patterns of evidence that you deal with have to do with the history of the children of Israel in Egypt. And how there has been a lot of, uh, shall we say, meandering away from the truth in the study of Egyptian history. And let's just talk about uh, Egyptian history, the Bible, the Exodus, and the dating schemes that, uh, that people have, have uh, attempted to work out up to now. Well, you know, I uh, first got interested in these stories as a child, like a lot of people. Uh, I, I was told the stories of the Bible uh, from my mother. And I grew up in a single parent home. And uh, so these, these stories of, uh, of Joseph and uh, stories of the Israelites in Egypt and Moses and the parting of the Red Sea, well, when you're a child and you hear these amazing stories, it was very, very fascinating. And so that's, that was sort of, you know, pe people have asked me, I don't know if you know this, but it took me 12 years to to put all this together and I didn't do it alone. There was a team of people and I've got our, our writing partner Steve Law who helped me with the book and, and we've been working on this for a long time. Asking this question, is the Bible, you know, is there any historical credibility to the Bible? And so that's basically how I got started on all this but it started as a child with my mother planning these stories into my mind and th in my heart. And that, that was sort of the drive for me, was when I heard that they, people were saying there wasn't any proof for the Bible, then I wanted to basically go and check it out for myself. Uh, Timothy has put out uh, a Blu-ray and a DVD called Patterns of Evidence dealing with Egyptian history. Uh, how accurate is it? What does the Bible say about it? Can you synchronize the Bible with what we know from archaeology? And, and uh, you say, well... That may be interesting, it may not be interesting. I guarantee you, once uh, you, you begin to open up the subject, it's really interesting. Uh, we talk about childhood. You talked about how you learned about the Bible uh, at, at an early age. My introduction to this whole thing was Cecil B. DeMille and the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. yep. Talk about an impression. And the Pharaoh Ramses. You know, Ramses was, was the powerful uh, opponent of, of Moses. And that's sort of been taken for granted uh, down right. through the ages. Right. A lot of, and, and there's good reason for it, by the way. You know, the Bible says that the early Israelites were building the store cities of Ramesses and Pithom. And so many people, when they first got, you know, when archaeologists, and I don't know if you know this, but Egyptology was actually started by churchmen. Uh, it was actually the church that sent people to Egypt mm. uh, to go and look uh, for. Uh, there was two types. There were people who were looking at the, the language and there were people who were looking for the artifacts. But a lot of the early endeavors of, of Egypt were for people that were actually having a Bible in one hand and a spade in the other. And when they, when they went and they uh, uh, you know, broke the code of the um, hieroglyphs and were able to start reading and what these uh, hieroglyphs were saying and they were starting to understand about Ramesses, the challenge was was that the story that they were looking for wasn't showing up in the history of Ramesses. And over time, the Bible started to lose its credibility. And it, it then went on to the story of, you know, after the, after the Exodus, there's the story of the conquest. Yes. You know, the Israelites are, are uh, delivered from Pharaoh and there's all these plagues and then he chases them to the Red Sea and then they're destroyed in the Red Sea and they go on to Mount Sinai and then they wander around for 40 years because they didn't have the faith to go in there the first time. Right. And uh, the conquest, Jericho's the first stop. And when the archaeologists started to uncover Jericho, in the beginning they could see the story was there. But later on there was 
a question about the time. He said, well, wait a minute. The time of Ramesses, this, this time that most people associate with the Exodus, they didn't see the archaeology of that matching up with the story of the Bible. And that's when they basically said that we don't think that this story really happened. Yeah, and so there's a lot of doubt uh, among historians and archaeologists uh, that the Bible is accurate. Well, there you go, right there. The game is on. If somebody says the Bible's not accurate, what are you going to do? If you're a Bible-believing Christian, you're going to be motivated to, to, to say, wait a minute, uh, there's something here we don't know. Let's find out what it is. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that, that uh, Tim, and may I call you Tim? You by can, the, yes. Tim did something really interesting in Patterns of Evidence, uh, the DVD that we'll be talking about a, a bit later. He, he, he invented an idea called the Wall of Time. And it's a fabulous way of presenting history. And, and I mean, it's, uh, it's something that you can see, you can look at. Uh, time is a difficult thing to deal with, you know, as a concept. Yes. But your wall of time makes it easy to see the problem in, in timing, if you will, between the Exodus itself and the time the children of Israel came back and destroyed Jericho and moved into the Promised Land. Uh, there is a timeline there, and you have to find markers that fit it into Egyptian history. And that's basically what this is all about. Right. In fact, you know, if you've ever seen or remember a picture of the Great Wall of China, you know, yeah. it, it has a certain height to it, and there's, right. there's these uh, areas where there's posts or there's um, parts of the fortress with that, that are sticking out. And we basically created the wall so that those would be every thousand years. Yeah. And then we created on the lower part was absolute time, and then the next level was Egyptian time, and then Bible time, and then the, uh, the timeline of Canaan or uh, uh, ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. And so you could see then when the Bible says certain things happen, where do we think that happened in the Bible's chronology? And, when, and then we had different parts for Egypt. And it really helped people because you know what happens is often the regular person when someone says the new kingdom or the uh, middle kingdom of Egypt's time period or this pharaoh happened at this time, I was so confused that for the first few years I couldn't figure it out. I had to figure out a way to simplify it. Yeah. And so that's what I did is I created a wall and you know visually speaking um, as people look at this wall, they're going to basically, we, we go back to it over and over in the film, and it helps to clarify what people are talking about. And I've had even children that get it, and they, you know, they basically understand a really complex topic that we've simplified, and now they understand the principles of it. And the good news about patterns of evidence is that what we decided to do was to look for six major events that happen in the Bible. And we said, okay, let's test the Bible. Can we find first evidence of the arrival of the Israelites mm -hmm. and evidence of a person such as Joseph? Can we find the fact that the Bible says that they multiplied? So that's the second step, to look for multiplication. The third one was that they multiplied so much that they scared the Egyptians and they thought we better make them slaves. And can we find evidence of this type of slavery? Those are the first three steps of the patterns of evidence that we look for. And then the Bible says that something happened that God rose up a person who we know as Moses and he came back and we have these plagues. God is going to be asking these people to be, to be released, these children to be released. And uh, I know that this is called Prophecy Watchers and Abraham earlier was told that his family, this would happen, that they would, they would grow into a mighty yeah. nation <clears throat> and that they would be enslaved but in the future someday that they would be freed and they would come back. Uh, and so we look for those other steps, which was the judgment of Egypt, the exodus of these people out of Egypt, and the conquest of the promised land, just as it was prophesied to Abraham. And that's what the film does, is it looks for those six steps, and what it, why people are so excited about it is that it finds a pattern of evidence for all six steps. The first time that's really ever been communicated this way. And it's so well done that you really won't be able to tear yourself away from the DVD. Actually, it's, it runs two hours. It's a two hour, yes. I say DVD. It's either DVD or Blu-ray, your yeah. choice. But it runs two hours, and you say, well, that's too long for me. Well, run it for an hour. Go get a snack. Come back and run it for another hour. Right. However you do it, uh, you're going to find yourself going to the end because it really does not let you down. 
Uh, in a minute I want to talk about Joseph. But before that I have a question. Why have so many archaeologists today actually turned away from faith in the Bible? They have become academics. Uh, but, but essentially they, they do not really believe strongly that the Bible supports uh, archaeology. I think the reason for it has to do to what people have, have had assumptions, right? If we yeah. have an assumption about something, and if we say this assumption is that this bowl should be right here, uh, and we know that it should be right here. And who told me that? Well, the person who taught me told me that the bowl should be here, and the person who taught him. So we have been given uh, in history uh, information from others. Mm -hmm. and, but what if that information, now as time went on, and it, we, this happens in medicine, it happens in science and engineering, that there's new discoveries and that, re, that refines the information. So you go, wait yeah. a minute, that, that old information isn't accurate. And I think that's what hap has happened in archaeology. We know more about uh, the information of the archaeology now and we have more insight into where the mistakes were made. And what this film basically starts to show is that there is a pattern in the right sequence. Uh, there's a pattern in the right sequence for the events, but it's earlier. It's earlier. And since no one can see it right here, but it's, it's showing up over here, a lot of people are saying, well, are they going to accept that or not? That uh, means there's, there's a problem somewhere. A problem, yes. Yes. And so that's what, that, that's what the film raises up. Yes. Is there a problem with the chronology of ancient Egypt? And it's like, oh, we don't want to deal with that. Uh, but uh, so the, the question is, would you rather have a problem with the chronology of ancient Egypt or with the Bible? And that was the question that I asked. I had yeah. to ask myself, here I am a filmmaker, uh, you know, who am I to get involved with all this and raise these questions? But I think they're very, very important questions. And there's absolutely a fantastic evidence that shows that, that there is a problem there. And, we, and now people, and I'll tell you, what, you say, well, what, what difference does it make if Moses existed or if these, these things really happen? And I think the challenge is, is that is that if the Bible isn't historical and it's not true, Jesus actually believed and talked about Moses. Sure. So if Moses didn't exist, what does that mean for Jesus? As, as far as his, and, and the apostles, and you know, you, can see, you get where we're going oh, here. Oh sure, and, and when Jesus talked about Moses, he, he, he mentioned him always in an, in an atmosphere of complete credibility. Mm -hmm. Moses wrote this, therefore it's true. Right. And uh, that was Jesus' view of Moses. It should be ours. So we, if you have children go off to college or grandchildren, what's happening here is that as they go off to university and they take a history class on the Bible or whatever, what they'll be told uh, with the superior uh, you know, clarity that they're teaching uh, is that none of this happened. And, and what, so what ends up happening is that the whole thing becomes uh, uh, people have doubt now, huge doubt that these stories, and so what they say is, well it doesn't really matter if it happened, it's just that we learned from these teachings, mm -hmm. we're just learning from these teachings. And, and when I heard that, that there wasn't any evidence, I was absolutely shaken by that. Because if that's not true, then what else can we believe? And if the whole thing is a house of cards, it's just going to fall over. And, and, and what can you believe in the future? So I, don't, I was just driven, as well as others on our team, to go and to search out these questions. And what we found was an amazing pattern of evidence. And that's why I think it's yeah. such an important piece for people to have, basically to have right next to their Bible to look and say, well, here's what the Bible says, here's what the pattern is. And in, in this uh, uh, presentation, Tim gathers around him uh, scientists, archaeologists, some believers, some non-believers, uh, the archaeological authorities, people who are considered authorities in their field. Uh, he takes cameras into Egypt. He, he films uh, historical places. Uh, there's one stele, for example, with, uh, with the uh, hieroglyphs on it that spell out the word Israel. To see that with your own eyes is really to believe something. But what I want to talk about now is one of my favorite characters in all of the Bible, and that's Joseph. Yes. Uh, it is worth <laughs> the whole thing just to see what Tim presents about the life of Joseph and what you discovered in Egypt. I think it's fabulous. 
Right. What happened was, was that there's an Egyptologist by the name of David Roll. And David Roll is an agnostic. He's someone who doesn't have faith. He's, it's not that he doesn't believe that there's a God, but he just has lots of questions. And David uh, was researching this whole area. Uh, and he, he was looking at a, a problem in Egypt's history. And as he did that, he was look, looking back at the area where the Israelites would have been, and he came to this place called Avaris. And Avaris is the city underneath Ramesses. So you know how the Bible says that these events happen at the time of Ramesses? Yeah. Well, actually, we think, and I think the film builds a case for it, that it wasn't talking so much about a time, but about a location. Location. And, and so underneath this city is this older city called Avaris. And when, the, when these archaeologists dug down below it, they found this story that matches. It shows that there's this small group of people that came in here to the area. They were Semitic. They had the same type of house that Abraham uh, and uh, Jacob would have had uh, coming from this other area. It looks as if they were allowed to be there, just mm -hmm. as the Bible says. They were yeah. given permission. And... This, they had a main house, and then eventually that house was destroyed and a palace was built there. But the palace uh, was not, as they could tell by the tombs in the back, they had tombs in the back of the house or the palace, was not that of an Egyptian. And very unusual, it had 11 major tombs and one pyramid tomb. Now this is very significant because the pyramid tomb, uh, they had never seen a pyramid tomb that wasn't a, either for a pharaoh or for a queen. And so what that told David Roll, and what it told these archaeologists, was that this person was very, very important. So what we have is a Semitic person living in the same area that the Bible says uh, the Israelites came to, uh -huh. with the same small group, and there's an Egyptian uh, tomb that is honoring this Semitic person. And the Bible says that, that Joseph was made second in command to, in all of Egypt. Very important man, and the, what I love was the, uh, the, the statue that was found uh, right. broken in that area. Right. Inside the tomb was, this was a, like a mortuary temple. And so there's the, there's the pyramid tomb, and then you go inside it, there's a seated person sort of, you know, sitting like this, as you've seen others. But this one, he had, uh, the, tomb, the, the statue actually was, was hacked like there was, you know, someone was angry with this statue. Well, uh, uh, the, the remains that they found was it had red hair. So Ooh. it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Egyptian. It had the type of skin that you would see from a Semitic type person. And it had a coat and it had paint on the back of its shoulder of uh, multicolored paint. So, and we know the story about Joseph being we do. wearing a multicolored coat. And you could see in some of the tomb paintings that these people from this area had these type of striped coats like that. And then he had a throw stick, which was a, 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 like a position of authority. So here we have this tomb of a highly honored Semitic person with a throw stick of authority, red hair, um, and it just was matching the story that you would have seen of Joseph being a prime minister. But what's most interesting is when they f dug into the tomb, they went in there, they didn't find any bones. Hmm. And I don't know if you, if you recall the story, but Joseph said on his death, deathbed, he said, listen, I know the promise. I know what the prophecy that, that was given to Abraham. That prophecy was that when you retur that you'll return to the land, he says, take my bones with wow. you. And that's exactly what they found, was that there were no bones here. Once again, the pattern of evidence matched the story of Joseph. That's amazing. And when you see this uh, on the DVD and you can see the statue, you can see the, the ancient pigments are still discernible. They're showing skin color, showing the colors on the robe and right. so forth. And, and what really start, stimulated my imagination was the fact that you have two cities, one uh, below that was a, apparently abandoned and one new one built above. Which was Ramesses. Which is Ra the city of Ramesses, which suggests two different time periods. Right. And I think that's, I think you see these simple assumptions. You, so I think that, by the way, you know, in the Bible, the, the writer says that, that uh, Jacob and his family went and settled in the land of Ramesses. Well, what's interesting about that is that Ramesses hadn't existed yet. So somebody had updated or was trying to say that this is the location. It's similar to, oh, you know, you know we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're in an area where it might have been called something like where I'm from, St. Paul is our capital of Minnesota. But they didn't call it St. Paul in the beginning. They called it Pig's Eye. 
So we think probably St. Paul is probably a better name. <laughs> yeah, a I would priest say came so. along and said, no longer will you be called Pig's Eye, from now on you'll be called St. Paul. And, and what this does is it adjusts to the traditional historic timing. <clears throat> right. and, it, and it synchronizes the time between the Exodus and the 40 years of wandering and the arrival in the Holy Land. And suddenly when things begin to click together, and you right. show this on your wall of time as yep. you adjust uh, the various features of the archaeological landscape, you, it, it suddenly pops into focus for us and the Bible uh, becomes even more exciting than it was before. I think what you're absolutely correct. And, and what ends up happening is that some of these questions, you know, a lot, all of us have questions at times. So we, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, I think it's in Mark, where a man says to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Yeah. You know, there are, there are questions that are raised in Scripture, whether it's about the past or the present or the future, you know, with prophecy. And you've got these questions. And uh, one scholar told me, you know, just put that on the back burner and let it simmer for a while. And for me, 12 years uh, of trying to understand what was going on, and we just continue to, to uh, record interviews, right. search for information, and all of a sudden this idea came that we should look for the patterns. I, I mean, we coined, we, we used that term because that's what made the most sense. And it's a scientific approach to really testing the credibility of the Bible. And what was, what's, what's been emerging as these patterns are coming out and they're testifying to the historical credibility of the story of the Bible. And while we're talking about patterns of evidence, uh, this is the, uh, the DVD Blu-ray case that I'm holding here. This is the collector's edition. And this contains, and I'm going to open this up and, and we'll give you a better look at it. Uh, this contains the original Blu-ray DVD set of patterns of evidence, but it contains also three other DVDs. How many hours did you say? It's uh, over 10 hours of additional bonus material. And it's uh, going deeper into the evidence. You know, we weren't able to put all the evidence into the movie. because. And I thought, you know, now that we're here, let's, let's give people more evidence that they really yeah. want to dig into it. And then we talk about archaeology in the Bible. Uh, questions about why have uh, archaeologists turned away from the Bible. Uh, and there's a variety of different uh, components in that. And then impact and commentary has interviews with, uh, with actually Benjamin Netanyahu and Shimon Perez. There's other scholars, biblical theologians. Pat Boone has, uh, talks about our heritage and mm -hmm. our legacy. Uh, he's a descendant of Daniel Boone and he, he says, you know, the Bible gives us a heritage and we need to know what that is. And that's why this is so important is because it establishes a heritage that we have in our faith. Now you may have read the Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, you may have read the Bible and you've got a, uh, you think a pretty good idea, a pretty good grasp of, of Old Testament history. Uh, I guarantee you, after you've seen this DVD uh, produced by Tim, you'll realize you don't have as much of a grasp as you think you did because there's a <clears throat> kind of a cloudy period uh, in secular history. You know, you, and, and academics out there are saying, well, the Bible simply doesn't match up with what we're seeing in Egypt and, and in the Middle East. Well, here's the, remember when I told you about Champollion? Yeah. So what, what I'm going to suggest to you and what, what I was, uh, I'm a filmmaker by the way, I'm not a historian or an Egyptian Egyptologist or anything, but I'm, I've spent 12 years researching and, and understanding this. What we find and what uh, Egyptologists like David Roll has said is that Champollion got it wrong and that he picked the wrong guy. And it's like these cups. If, if you think this character is this character, this character, and you move them together, but they're not the same characters, then they're actually over like this, then you've just pulled one history over the top of another. But what if that, what if that idea is wrong? And, but no one's changed it. You see, it stayed the same. Stayed the same. And you know, I tell you what, you know in any kind of science, engineering or uh, electronics or uh, nuclear information, they, the science is constantly uh, reevaluating self and what they thought was true at one time now they come up with something different and it changes the whole world well I can tell you that ancient history doesn't change very easily people aren't necessarily willing to change those ideas and uh, but this is what the film is talking about and uncovering and what we have found then we said okay all right let's just take a step back here let's look at what does the pattern look like what because you know, there's different ways to approach it and once we had the wall of time and we could start looking for the pattern and if we talk about Jericho, for example, uh, the question 
because we show in the series in the investigation that there's all these events that the Bible talks about. Can we find them? Can we find them in the right sequence? And the and that's the, the question. The right sequence. And and let's put it this way, uh, just as simply as I can think of a way to put it. it the, uh, the children of Israel wandered for 40 years and they came into the Holy Land at some time. Let's just call it time X. Right, we right. just don't know. Let's say we don't know when they came into the Holy Land and let's say that we try to backdate the time they left Egypt and then run the clock forward to the time they entered into the Holy Land and we can put together some history. But if any of those timings are wrong <clears throat> then you, you have a lack of agreement, you have people saying, well, there's not enough history to really know the truth here. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have a, a lot of dispute about, about true history. And that's where you come in. Well, um, myself with a load of other people that have been uh, looking at it, and what we find is that the Bible does actually have a, a time that it gives. It says that the, you know, from the time of the temple back, uh, there's a particular time period that they look at. And what we see is that, so we do know that there's particular, the Bible is fairly specific about when things were supposed to happen. The tricky part comes with matching that with other parts of ancient history. And so when people, we talked about Ramesses, because the Bible references Ramesses as the Pharaoh, uh, that the Israelites were building his cities. Now what's so interesting is, I'm going to give you another little clue here. The Bible says that they were building the cities of Ramesses and Pitam when Moses was born. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then it says that Moses grew up in this household and then he kills the Egyptian and he flees. And then it says uh, eventually later on the Pharaoh dies. So then who is the Pharaoh? Is it Ram if Ramesses was the city it was building and he dies then it can't be Ramesses in the first place. Because uh, there's a new Pharaoh, right? And right. he comes back. So those are all those little tricks. So we started to think about all those little questions or challenges. We started realizing that maybe it's not Ramesses they're talking about, maybe it's the location. It's the location of Ramesses because underneath the city of Ramesses is an older city. And what this film is exploring is the fact that we think uh, through the scholars that I've talked to and the pattern of evidence that shows up, it's earlier in Egypt's time period. It's, it's actually or earlier in the time period going this way. It's in the Middle Kingdom and that's what this film is exploring. And, and basically saying is, I, there is evidence here that you need to know about. You and your family need to know about it. Because when your children go off to school and go off to college and your grandchildren grow up and they're hearing there's no evidence for the Bible and they're going, wait a minute, Ma, Pop, what, you're, what you believe, I, I, don't, I don't believe because my teacher is a lot yeah. smarter than you says there's no evidence for this. <laughs> you basically have something like this and say, hold on there, Sonny, yeah. you know, uh, let me show you something. And that's why this is so powerful because we listen to the, both sides, we listen to the different viewpoints, and we let the, the people who say there's no evidence have their say. And then we start showing this pattern, and it's pretty hard to deal with because it's so powerful. And that's basically what happens. And then we move to the story, for example, of Jericho. We wanted to talk about that today. That people said, well, there's no evidence for people at the time of Jericho because during the time of Ramesses, we don't see that Jericho was destroyed. There was no city there. Right. And so the question then is, is what, what's going on? Is the Bible well, wrong to, or is the archaeology wrong? Right. And you have to synchronize what happened in Egypt with what happened in the Holy Land. Right. And uh, archaeologists have either A, not particularly wanted to do that, or B, had, had their own biases that kept them from doing it. And you may be thinking, well, wow, this is way over my head and it sounds boring to me. I guarantee you when, you, when you look at patterns of evidence in the DVD or the Blu-ray version, you are, this is a, what I call a popcorn cruncher. You're going to be sitting there just saying, wow, this is fascinating. And when the first hour ends <clears throat> and you take your little break and come back, uh, it, you're not going to want to quit because... What Tim has done, and Tim is a great filmmaker, uh, and, and a good filmmaker is able to keep your attention. Uh, a, a noted authority says this, uh, another authority says this, Tim interviews them both, he takes them to the scene, the camera is set up in Egypt, you can see the, the stele with the Egyptian hieroglyphics, and and you, it's literally an adventure uh, film. Yeah, it is, it's really, uh, what I'm going to do is take you on my 12 year journey and basically allow people to 
to go with me. And one of the things that people might not know about is that we got the actual, you know, our dig site plans, the right where the size of the city was. We rebuilt Jericho, uh, the ab absolute footprint, according to what the archaeologists dug up. So when you're looking at Jericho, we placed Jericho exactly in the valley because uh, we've got the, the maps uh, and we've rebuilt it exactly. So when you're looking at it, you might be seeing what, what the Joshua and the Israelites saw. You're going to basically see this city in its context exactly. We've done that with the city of Avaris as well. So I try to do, and to tell the story, we actually do recreations. We, we actually show the wall you know, coming down. Yeah, right. And uh, <clears throat> so you're hearing the Bible story, and then we're saying, can we find evidence for this? And what people are going to see in this series and uh, in the book is a pattern of evidence for all of these different areas, even the story of Rahab, for example. That was excellent, by the way. Uh, let's talk about Jericho because there was the wilderness. Now, I believe, and I know you believe, that around 1450 BC, uh, the Egyptians. Uh, uh, left. Uh, uh, the Israelites. And they, so thank you. The Israelites left Egypt. And uh, when they did, they be, a clock started ticking. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it sort of finished ticking when they crossed the Jordan River and came into the Promised Land. And you have just, I think, nailed the, the, the when and the why and the where and then you've done some marvelous digging in history so that we can actually see the city of Jericho as it was first excavated back in the 19th century. And tell us that story. Well, uh, in the 19th century, I think it was uh, right around World War II, um, the, uh, a German went there, Ernst Zellen. And Ernst Zellen uh, was one of the first, and then he was followed by a British person, by two British. One was Garstang, and another one was Kathleen Kenyon. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Zellen and Garstang both felt that they had found a city that was matching the biblical time period and matching the Bible. Yeah. And um, what, had, what, what was also very interesting, I kept hearing about the Germans, and like in my own kind of detective approach, I kept hearing about the Germans, the Germans. And it wasn't until later with Bryant Wood, we started t t telling me about this house that the Germans found. And, um, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second. It's this, it, 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 what's interesting is that the Bible says that the walls fell all around the story. You know, the story is that this person, Rahab, had hid these Israelite spies. And she had heard about God and these people, and they were, the whole city was terrified. Mm -hmm. And she hid them, and she says, I want you to protect my family. And uh, she was to do that, and they promised her. So she put a cord out the window. Well, uh, what Brian Wood told me was that when Garstang dug up this area, what he found was that one portion of the wall on the northern side did not fall, that the, houses was, the house was in the wall, exactly as it had been told in the Bible. The rest of the area had, had collapsed, but not this one area. So once again, matching the story of uh, Jericho. And later on, we find that uh, in when Kenyon in Garsting also dug it. They saw that the walls had fallen down as if, and then there was a fire. So we do know that when the walls fell down, one portion of the city was, did not fall. The walls fell down and it made a ramp so that you could actually run up into the city. And then the city was set on fire. That's what, Garsting, that's what uh, uh, Kathleen Kenyon said, was that the city was set on fire. And this matches exactly with the story of the Bible. Yeah, so the Israelite journey, uh, I guess the point that, that hit me uh, in this, the Israelite journey uh, is a documentary with time markers that all make sense. Yes. Once you know what you're looking at. Uh, the exodus, uh, the, wil the wilderness march, the entry into the promised land, and then the things that were happening in the promised land all fit together and give us a timeline that a lot of people say it really doesn't exist. There's t I suppose there's still some doubt out there about this timeline, right? Oh yeah, this is controversial, uh, absolutely. But it's, it makes too much sense, for, and that's the reason why. <laughs> I, I had asked the question as a filmmaker, was I going to bring this up? And you know what? It makes so much sense. And if yeah. people are open to looking at it. And so I thought, let's, do, let's take the Bible on. Let's allow the Bible to be tested. And, and that's what, what we've done. And I was afraid in the beginning that, you know, I don't want to hurt 
my own faith or, or, or others. Uh, but you know what came out of this was that when you listen to the different viewpoints and you see what the Bible is saying, and when you are open to listening to this, yeah. that's the reason why it's so powerful, is because people are getting something they've never heard before. And there's a whole new breakthrough that there is a pattern of evidence that matches these stories. And it's testifying to the historical uh, nature of this, of God acting in history. So, to put this all together, what we have is a, uh, a mystery story. Uh, in fact, as I watched your DVD, uh, and by the way, it's, it's either Blu-ray or DVD, your choice, uh, and we'll talk about that in, in, in when we talk about this set called Patterns of Evidence. Uh, as I watched this thing, more and more I wasn't looking at something about the Bible as much as I was watching a great mystery story that has all the attributes of a good everybody loves a mystery you know something happens and you don't know exactly why it happened and now and so you have to you bring in two or three characters and and, and they try to figure out why things happened in the sequence that they did and that will that leads them to something else and that's exactly what happens in your DVD and I love it it's uh, it's hard to convey that uh, just sitting here and telling people what they're going to be seeing, but that's what uh, is so attractive of, about this DVD to me. Right. It is a bit of a Sherlock Holmes it uncovering is. of things because I traveled so much. I went over to Europe many, many times. I was in Israel five or six times, Egypt twice, uh, went to the Sinai. So there's just a lot of going back and forth because I didn't know what was going to happen. I wasn't sure if there was going to be, you know, 12 years, a lot of people thought, yeah. hey, this has taken a long time. Or, Do you really even have a film to be made here? Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't until the last several years when we started to understand, because I get information years earlier and I didn't know what it meant. I had information about Rahab and uh, I had the book. I got the book from Jer in Jerusalem uh, probably four or five years earlier and I didn't know what I had. You see, I think there's a lot of times we have information, we just don't know how it fits the puzzle. And in this DVD you can actually see that section of the wall that didn't fall. Yes. <clears throat> it's visualized and, and the, the scarlet cord that was let down. Right. And that whole story, and it gives a reality to Rahab that, that you never really sensed before that time. Of course Rahab then was elevated as a, as a person of faith in the history of the Bible. She's actually in the Messianic uh, uh, line as given in Matthew. You know, the reason why this is so important, I believe, because I, I have children, I have six grandchildren now, and you know, the question of is this historical? You know, the stories of, pro you know, they're prophetic. There was prophecies that were given, and, and, uh, and I'm, we've looked at that. The prophecy to Abraham about the story of the Exodus was prophetic. And you look at these questions and you start to ask, uh, did they happen? And your children are going to ask, yeah. Did they happen? Your grandchildren are going to say, come on, Papa, you know, did this really happen? And uh, they believe it for a while and then they go to school and some kid says, well, you believe that, you know? But that's why I think that this is significant because it's actually a great shareable tool for your family and for your friends who are doubters. Uh, there are patterns of evidence and they are so strong that it's going to be pretty hard for them not to see that there's something that happened. It really is testifying. Egyptian history clarified at last in uh, this DVD set, Patterns of Evidence, and I have taken out the contents and I'm going to open them up so that you can see what you get <clears throat> when you order this collector's edition set. You have the Blu-ray DVD and plus three other DVDs. Tell us about the, the, the three others. Well there's so much evidence that we've, we felt that we needed to expand all of the six steps. So we have one disc that's expanding the, that. And this is up, up to almost 10 hours of additional information. We have another one that basically deals with digging deeper into the archaeology of the Bible. You know there's questions, I was going to just show you, there's a, there's a, a sheet that we give out here. Uh, and it has things like, is there a bias against the Bible's historical record? How much has been unearthed? You know, they say that just a very little bit of has, right. been, has been, there's so much that's waiting to be unearthed. And then this one questioning that ancient timeline is another very important uh, uh, DVD. And then we've got a panel discussion with um, Gretchen Carlson from Fox News, with uh, Ann Graham Lotz and Dennis Prager and Eric Metaxas and Father Jonathan Morris. 
an amazing discussion about what does this mean? What is the impact about this? So there's a whole series with, um, uh, you know, uh, I got one here. How is the Exodus foundational to our faith? And understanding our heritage with Pat Boone. So there's a lot of excellent pieces. But this is also has a wall of time insert so that you can pull this out. You can look at the wall of time. And we also have an ancient, the ancient map of the, uh, that basically gives you a, a context. So as you're sitting there and you're looking at this film, you're going to go, oh, now I understand. These are scenes from the film that are going to be really, really helpful for you. And by the way, uh, in addition to that uh, collector's edition set, which we're offering for $59.95, uh, we have the book called Patterns of Evidence, but hardcover, uh, beautiful, beautiful pictures on virtually every page in this book, $29.95, and uh, lets you go at leisure through the, uh, the story of the Exodus mystery and kind of see how it was developed and solved. Uh, so we have the book for twenty nine ninety five, the collector's edition set for fifty nine ninety five, and with every order, if you order, we uh, will send along a copy of uh, the Prophecy Watcher, our monthly magazine. Just go to prophecywatchers.com, click the online bookstore, and you'll see how to order uh, these wonderful, wonderful uh, DVD sets or the book, or both. Listen, it, it's important to me. And let's get to the important part now. Why is a study like this so important? Tim and I have talked about it, and we both agree that if history is correct, if you can depend on the Bible as history, and you can locate key elements in the historical progress of the Old Testament that actually are discoverable in, when you go out there with a spade and start digging, if all this is true, it expands your faith a hundredfold. Suddenly, you, you, if you can depend on the, what's in the past, then the future uh, is also dependable. That's correct. And I think that's what I started to see, is that if, if you can't believe in the past and the events that happened, then what can you believe for today and in, in the future? Uh, or, you know, will God you know, be true to His Word? And uh, the thing that, what, that I started to realize is people said there was no evidence for this. And you know what? That just wasn't true. And uh, I, I, when I went out to ask that question, then I realized that, wait a minute, what, if I found out that it was true that there was evidence, I wanted to share it with others. And that's the reason why this is so important. We, I, I, we were able to create this, these products to share. They're, they're very shareable because you're hearing from different sides. And I think that it's really important to be able to share. And what it does is it'll, it'll help your own faith and give you more confidence. Yeah. But you're going to have something now. You're going to have a new way to discuss the Bible with others. And, and there's a point that I should make at, the, at this time, and that is that uh, I think Tim was very brave in inviting experts who were not necessarily of his belief system. They were experts in archaeology, in various academic pursuits, who not, were not necessarily Bible believers, but they had a lot of information they could share. And, and I think that the fact that you provided both sides, both believers and unbelievers, and, and kind of interpolated uh, their knowledge into, into your final conclusion is, uh, is a good thing. And that's the reason why it makes the, the, these products so shareable. Because if you've got family members that are, you know, have been critical of a one-sided approach, now what you have is you've got, uh, you've got a lot to think about. You have. And it gives you a lot to think about. And, and, it's, uh, and at the end of the conclusion is that, uh, just so you, you can know, that there is a pattern of evidence that matches the biblical narrative, the biblical story. And that's what I think is so encouraging about this series. Author and filmmaker Timothy Mahoney, it's been a, a great pleasure talking with you, Tim. It's great to be here, Gary. And you need to uh, apprise yourself of the information on patterns of evidence. I'm Gary Stearman. We're watching, so you keep watching, too. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter. In the meantime, keep watching, everybody, and we'll see you soon.